and you are listening and watching SCW The Wrestling Channel. Uh, we're here on YouTube.com. You may be listening on multiple podcast platforms as well as long as Spotify, Anchor and iTunes. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, we're going to be discussing a lot on today's show with SCW, uh, mainly to do with SummerSlam, uh, which of course is one of the big four events on the WWE calendar. Uh, and I've got a very special guest with me on the show today uh, who's going to be attending the SummerSlam weekend in Ontario, Canada, um, all the way from the UK. Uh, Ricky, Ricky, how are you doing? I'm very well, Steve. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good, thing. It's great to have you back on the show. Uh, just to give uh, people up to speed who've maybe not heard some of the previous podcasts we've done together, um, Ricky, you've gone to a lot of previous um, big events over in the States. You've been to multiple WrestleManias. Uh, you've also been to the Royal Rumble as well. Um, what is the feeling here of going into SummerSlam? Um, has this got a different feel to the other ones? I think it has got a different feel. Um purely because it doesn't I think SummerSlam doesn't have the hype of WrestleMania. WrestleMania they, they tend to take over the city for the whole week. SummerSlam is a little bit of a, a slimmed down version of WrestleMania, although they are trying to change that and make it kind of a week long event. Certainly with it being in, in Canada, they're gonna try and capitalise on it being in a, a you know outer US uh, territory. But certainly, you know, for me it's a slimmed down version of WrestleMania. Yes. Would it would it be more similar to the to the Royal Rumble? Uh, I think it sits between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. To be fair, um, we've we the package that I've gone for gives you all of your standard, you know, NXT Takeover, Toronto, your SummerSlam, Raw, and SmackDown gives you all of those as standard. But what they've also done this year as well is they've thrown in uh, a free meet and greet. So they've now started literally last week. They've offered meet and greets with the wrestlers. So they're kind of doing like a a WWE access, but without all of the, from what I understand anyway, without all of the memorabilia and the setup of the rings. So you're literally attending a convention centre and there's going to be all of the wrestlers there that you'll be able to meet. And also they're doing kind of a, a lunch, late lunch they've called it, where you're going to go to a hotel and there's going to be some legends and superstars there before Raw. So it's not the full scale works of the events that you can go to, but certainly it sits between a Royal Rumble and a WrestleMania. Absolutely brilliant. Well, it does sound very exciting. Have you got uh, any idea yet of which uh, superstars or legends that you may have the opportunity to meet while you're there? Yes. So we have guaranteed tickets on the Sunday morning to meet the WWE NXT men and women's champions. So whoever that may be at the time, obviously they can't say ahead of time for obvious reasons. Yes. And then also on this Saturday, I've booked to get tickets to meet Big E and uh, Xavier Woods. Oh, fantastic. As the confirmed ones, and then we'll try and see whoever else is available under the general admission. But, you know, typical superstars that are available, uh, you know, you've got Kurt Angle, Elias, I think the Iconics are available as well. So there's a list of people that we'd hopefully like to get ticked off. Obviously, with it being Bobby's first ever WWE event, uh, Bobby Six, for those of you who, who don't know, but Bobby Six, and it's his first ever WWE event, and I'm taking him away to, to Canada for it. Absolutely loves Big E, does a brilliant Big E impression, which I'm sure I'll share at one point. So you'll be able to see that, and for him to meet Big E, is, uh, I think I'm more excited about it than he is, and he doesn't even know about it yet. <laughs> That's incredible. No, it sounds absolutely brilliant. And yeah, is, is this this is the first time then that you say he's going uh, to one of these big events? Has he been to any show before? Uh, he's never been to a WWE show. He's been to kind of holiday camp wrestling, and absolutely loved that. Um, he's he's been watching some of the wrestling on the on the telly. Watched the World of Sport that was on ITV over here. He loves WWE. Watches it all the time. Talks to me about it twenty four seven. Um, he's got all the wrestlers and absolutely everything. Loves it. So to take him to SummerSlam will be a really big opportunity for me to get him properly involved in it. Oh, absolutely brilliant! Uh, if you don't mind me asking one question, just while while uh, we're we're on that subject, um, does that give you uh, like as Obviously, we have a, a different demographic of, of what superstars, of the target audience, of what they go for, of course. You know, we have like certain superstars that are more catered for the younger audience and some for the older audience. Um, does that really sort of apply with, with someone like Bobby? Does, does he sort of think, right, well, I'm supposed to like these superstars? Or does he already sort of kind of click on and say, well, actually, no, these are the cooler superstars. I much prefer, like, like you say, the Undisputed Era, the, the New Day, perhaps to maybe like a John Cena or Roman Reigns. Yeah, I think it's, you know, for him... Bobby likes 
big he likes the whole new day to be yeah. fair he likes the one you know like lucha house party and people like that as well yeah. it's really weird seeing how it changes week on week as to what his favorite superstars are but he's also really obsessed with the legends you know Shawn michaels he absolutely loves Shawn michaels yeah. so he's going to love raw tonight obviously being the raw reunion where Shawn michaels is going to be there yeah. so tomorrow when i speak to him all he's going to talk about is is oh my word you know Shawn michaels and stone cold are back because he's really got into his legends because he watches a lot of the top 10 videos that are on youtube yeah and of course they feature most of those but yeah it really it, it, it's really good because he doesn't it doesn't go with your you know your seth just because he's the champion he will just latch on to the characters that he likes the only thing that's a little bit mm, over the past couple of weeks is where it's got a little bit it's kind of pushing the boundaries of pg and they're starting to use a little bit of language as such sometimes i have to say to him you know oh maybe you know they, they don't repeat that bob you know when you hear that you're going to hear things and, and try not to repeat and he kind of looks and he goes all right dad yeah i won't <laughs> <laughs> yeah well they have they have done that actually because uh, of course there's uh, we, we you mentioned that there uh bray wyatt is also a character that's come in uh and yeah. repackaged um with with that new mask that that's kind of um mm-hmm. i find that quite freaky and i'm not sharing my age. yeah um, but I'm definitely at the halfway point of that age. But um, like, how 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 does that feel? Has as, as Bobby seen this Bray White character? How does he feel yes. about it? Yes. So I saw it uh, live at, when I went to see Raw at the O2 in April. Okay. Um, I actually saw it because that's when they started to show the the Firefly Funhouse uh, vignettes. So I actually saw it, and at the time, sent a message and said, "You know, be careful when Bobby watches the wrestling because Bray Wyatt's mask is quite scary." You know, yeah. someone of my age, even I thought oh, that's a bit creepy, and a six-year-old yeah. will find it creepy as well. Yeah. But he was absolutely fine with it at that point. When he watched Raw last week, he cried his eyes out because it scared him that much. Yeah. And I think the the lighting had a lot to do with it because it was, you know, yeah. it's very impactful what, what they actually did with it. You know, flashing lights and things. And as I said to him when I spoke to him, I said, you know, you've got to remember. It's not real. That's not his real face. He's going to take that off and he's going to be Bray Wyatt underneath it. Whether he wrestles in it like Kane does um, is obviously yet to be seen. I think part of me thinks he will because if you look at the back of the mask, it's quite heavily strapped to his head, unlike the the chic mask that um, they used to wear when they were in the Wyatt family. So I think he will wrestle in it. Bobby will get used to it. But it's just one of those things that, you know, is a, oh my gosh, quite a, a shock when you see it in the ring for the first time. Yeah, like you said, though, as well, I mean, I think that's a very key point you've made there. It's not just the mask as well, it's the the what they, the scenery and how they they made that. Because it isn't just simply Bray White came to the ring, the, the lights went out, there was a way that the, also the sound of the music kind of went off in a funny way. There, there was uh, a lot of different elements that made that what it was. So, of course, like you say, it simply is just getting used to, and like, and like you say, I mean, for... for we all know as well that there isn't real it's Bray Wyatt underneath it and of course he's just portraying a character yeah. uh, and, and like we, we exactly. don't know where that character is going to go at this particular time but um, hopefully we'll get a clear indication as we move more towards the future in, in WWE um, I have to ask one more question as we said like uh, we have some of those favourites that are, are, are Bobby's favourites um, does that influence your favourites as well because you know that he likes those superstars do you have more of a maybe more of a care to the Lich House Party than maybe you have done previously Mm, I'll probably, I mean, I won't sit there and go, yay, Lucha House Party. <laughs> but I, I, it, it makes me not skip through their matches when we're watching it together, if that's, yeah. if that's one bit. Yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I think a lot of it rubs off from me onto him because I collect the, the pop vinyls, uh, the WWE oh, okay. pop vinyls. So I've got a lot of the older, you know, like Million Dollar Man, Chris Jericho, Razor Ramon. So he's always been asking me for years, ever since he comes around, and he's been asking me, oh, Dad, you know, who's Million Dollar Man? And I've yeah. always explained to him who he was and, you know, Erwin R. Scheister and things like that. So, you know, tonight for me is quite a good you know, point in Raw Reunion because I've said to him when I've spoken to him tonight, I said, oh, watch out for Million Dollar Man tonight because he's on Raw and he's gone, oh, is he? Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. So he can now actually see that the pops that I've got and the kind of the wrestlers that I grew up with are now kind of still in it and are coming back and he can put a pop vinyl to an actual real person. That's brilliant. That absolutely sounds fantastic. Well, we should mention that very quickly because you said there were superstars you grew up with. Um, it should actually be brought to attention as well that we've spoken on previous podcasts. This isn't your first SummerSlam, is it? No. No. My first SummerSlam was Wembley Stadium in 1992, I think it was. I was terrible. I've forgotten it. It must have been 92. Yeah. Yeah, So 1992 was my, my first ever SummerSlam. So this will be my second SummerSlam event. 
Wow, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, I mean, it's the first one I ever watched as well. I, I didn't have the the to to get to so see it live, unfortunately. But uh, definitely, arguably one of the best summer slams of all time as well. There, but uh, definitely a special event. Um, how are you feeling with with the build currently of WWE going into this year's Summer Slam? I think it needs a little a lot more work. Um, obviously, I've seen today that Eric Bischoff only starts his job officially as of today. So I think we should start over the next couple of weeks. Start seeing the SmackDown part of the. Um, you know, uh, SummerSlam event coming to fruition. Um, the, the matches so far, if I'm honest, I'm not particularly excited about Becky Lynch versus Natalia. I think personally they've thrown Natalia in there because she's Canadian and they need a Canadian in the in one of the main events. Mm-hmm. Brock versus Seth again. I don't think that really excites me. The, the rumours that I've seen are that um, it's going to be a proper match rather than just a, a suplex match from Brock. So that'd be quite good. Yeah. Um, and, and we've currently got Bailey versus Ember Moon, haven't we? Which, you know, I'm pleased for Ember Moon because she's kind of stagnated. I know she had an injury and she's just coming back from her injury. But I quite, I, in NXT, Ember Moon was always someone that impressed me. And I think that she could potentially run with the SmackDown Championship if she's given the chance. Yeah, I would agree with that. And she's also got a, a match with Charlotte Flair this week on SmackDown Live. Do you have... Um... Would you be opposed? I mean, there, there's lots of rumours flying around online. Of course, nothing's been said by WWE, so it's definitely a massive pinch of salt at this point. But say Charlotte Flair was to manage to get inserted into this match and become a triple threat, does that make that better for you, obviously travelling so far that you get to see another superstar in action? Or does this take away from the match for you? Takes away from it, because why is WWE's default position to show throw Charlotte Flair into the match? Mm. They did exactly the same when Becky was facing Ronda. They threw Charlotte into the match. Mm. It's almost like, you know, oh, we've run out of ideas and we haven't got anything for Charlotte to do. We've got no meaningful feud. Mm. So let's chuck her in there and, and maybe even put you know the belt on her. I just, I think they need to think of something else to do with Charlotte. I would agree. Something more meaningful rather than chucking her into the triple threats all the time. Because it's almost like it's an afterthought. Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, to be fair as well, she was thrown in last year at SummerSlam as well, went to the triple threat idea with Becky and uh, Carmella as well. So uh, they have done it previously. Uh, of course, it's only uh, speculation at this point. And of course, maybe by the time um, this podcast is, uh, you know, it's only it could be a couple of days away, people may know a different story and we may have maybe wasted 60 seconds, but you never know. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. That I think the problem is them, they've got so many female talents on the roster that they need to have a lot of these sorts of matches to get everybody on the card. Yeah. And I think personally, I'd much rather have a slimmed down card than throwing people on it for the sake of getting them on the actual card itself. Yeah. Just... You've got plenty of, you've got plenty of hours to fill. You've got some pre-show time to fill because they're not you know, obviously near at the time that announced the pre-show, but you've yeah. got the pre-show to fill. You've got the actual event itself. Spread it out and don't have too many multiple person matches because that's not what wrestling is all about. No, definitely not. You can't get the same story as you would from a, you know, a, a typical feud of someone that actually hates one another. The good guy, the bad guy, really put them in one on one action. Exactly. Tag teams. That's that's the best yep. way. Rather than throwing three or four teams together in a mismatch match, all you're going to get is just some. You will get some great spots out with the match. Um, but uh-huh. that's probably as best you can hope for, really. It becomes more of a spot fest than, than the match itself. But um, I mean, yep. the, are, are there particular? I mean, there are some matches rumored potentially going to be thrown on the card. I, I don't know uh, if any of those will happen yet. But are there certain matches that you expect could happen that you would like to see happen? Uh, I think there's going to be. It looks as if a Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon. Mm-hmm. I would assume yeah. that's the way we're going. Um, that as long as that match ends in Shane McMahon never being near WWE television again, then I'm all for that. Yeah. Because, I, you know, and I think it's quite clever, isn't it? Because the Kevin Owens character is essentially absolutely everything that everyone's been saying for almost this entire year mm. as to why on earth have we got Shane McMahon getting so much TV time across multiple shows when you've got people who are not getting any TV time. So, you know, I think as long as that ends the right way, I'm, I'm all for that match. Dolph Ziggler, oh, <laughs> He'll get a match, won't he, at some Probably. point, I suppose. Um, I don't I don't really know what. Uh be interesting to see if Sami Zayn gets a match out of this, being a home a hometown boy or home uh, kind of country boy. So it'd be interesting to see what that, that does. Um the iconics, they need to defend the title because they haven't for no. some time. No. So I think there's still quite a few matches that 
interesting to see if they make it onto the card. Definitely. One, one that I feel could be a potential, depending on last week's SmackDown, um, Randy Orton uh, pinned Kofi in the six-man tag team match, and he got a lot of cheers last week on Raw as well when they, people thought he would potentially be the guy against Brock at SummerSlam when uh, that battle Royal was going <coughs> on. Do you think there's a potential that Orton could be thrown in a, a feud with Kofi? Maybe. He could well be. I think Orton's at a point... No, if, if Orton puts his mind to it, then he could he could you know, really do things, do wonders with the championship. That's not to say that Kofi isn't, because I think Kofi is a really, really good champion, and he's really he's not changed his character. He has just stayed his New Day character whilst being the champion, and I think that's great. Mm. You know, that's not going to continue forever. However, I wonder whether putting the SmackDown tag titles on New Day adds to that as well. But I'd be interested in Kofi still having a run. I'd be you know more than happy with Randy having. Uh, a shot at it. I don't know if Randy's the person to take the belt off of Kofi. I'd much rather someone like, and I know he's on Raw technically, but Samoa Joe. Uh, for me, he deserves a title run because I think there's no better heel in the business than Samoa Joe. And he yeah. just doesn't get the opportunities to do it in WWE. No, no. He seems to be the guy that's the, the big bad wolf and he gets to the pay-per-view and all of a sudden he just crumbles, doesn't he? He's, uh, he's a fantastic... Exactly. He's yeah. a fantastic... Uh, guy up for a promo he's got a menacing look he normally looks like he's unstoppable normally on the road to pay-per-views uh-huh. but then he gets there and uh, he just he loses he even drops the US title a, a very quick yeah. fashion twice this year so um, no I, I completely agree with you we need to see a, a stronger Samoa Joe going forward uh, well we've, we've we've touched on that SummerSlam card then I mean NXT TakeOver then you're going to be going to that show as well there um, yep. there, there's there's a, a lot of rumours as well for that card as well um, it seems that we've got Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole in a three stages of hell match now we're not sure what the stages are at this particular moment but no. um, that that seems like that's going to be a very exciting match to be a part of two match of the year candidates so far do you think we're going to get the hat trick? Mm, I reckon so yeah, it feels so, doesn't it? It really does. What would you yeah. like to see from this takeover then? What, what, sir? Because I mean, you've been to some previous great takeovers. What would make this one stand out for you? Well, I just think that there hasn't been, and I know I'll probably jinx this yet, but there hasn't been a bad takeover. NXT just do not put on bad shows. No matter what show they put out, it always knocks it out of the park and gives WWE something to aim for mm. on the following night. You know, and for me, Adam Cole versus Gargano. You know, that'll be a fantastic, especially because it's a two out of three falls. So that'll be absolutely fantastic. I think today you've had the Street Profits versus Undisputed Era for the tag belts. Yeah, Again, belts. that'll be really, really good. Um, you'll obviously have a women's match on there as well, plus the um, uh, North American Championship match. Indeed, yeah. You know, they've just got so many superstars down there that I just think whatever they put on, it's not going to be bad anyway. No, definitely not. Definitely not It'd be either. nice to see Pete Dunne on it. I know it might might not happen because he's not really anything, but wouldn't it be great just to have Pete Dunne just turn up and do something on on proper NXT as opposed to always being on NXT UK? Well, I, all I will say to you, Ricky, is I'm not going to give any of the spoilers away, um, but um, you might, I'm just going to say might be in luck, but well, I don't know for okay. sure. You might be in luck with Pete Dunne, but uh, we'll have to wait and see, of course, everything. I, I try to avoid yeah. the spoilers as best as possible, but... Um, Maybe he might make an appearance on the on the American NXT sometime mm. soon. But um... I think he's got to do he's got to do something, hasn't he? And I you know I haven't seen any spoilers either. But he's got to do something because he lost the championship to to Walter, mm. who now seems to be going up against other multiple other people. So I think now's the time to to do something else with Pete. And I appreciate. Maybe he doesn't want to do it because he just recently had a, a child, so maybe he wants to kind of stay closer to home. Mm. But, you know, I think it's time to pull him over into proper NXT. I would agree. I mean, the thing is, the only place you can go when you've been champion for that long of the United Kingdom uh, is, down, is to go down the card. And normally when you go down the yeah. card, you become less important. He's got ladders mm-hmm. he can go on. And he's been in the Royal Rumble this year. He's been involved in... Uh, you know, in some high-profile spots, I think it's time that he definitely does move up towards the card. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it's, uh, it's definitely exciting, um, and it, it sounds like that uh, with this 
SummerSlam period coming up that we, we hopefully are going to get a good show and uh, all I can say is that I do hope that uh, you and Bobby have a fantastic time while you're over there because um, you know it's it's uh, it's going to be very special for him and especially to meet you know all those multiple different superstars and um, we touched there on, on, on access there uh, and in, earlier running you saying that how like um, there's not really the ring sort of put up and stuff like that so it's more just a meet and greet there's not really much of that memorabilia stuff that's the way they've sold it to us. They've said it's it's kind of a meet the meet the superstars. So all I can imagine is there are lots of tables around and, and kind of there's a they've they've put superstars into different priorities. Obviously the more money you pay, the more you get out of it. So they've got, you know, gold celebrity uh, superstars yeah. such as Becky and Seth and they're doing like a Q&A session and things like that as well and it goes all the way down to bronze which is what Biggie and uh, Xavier Woods are a bronze but there's also just general admission so even if you get one of the higher priced tickets you can still then go round to the general admission and get people to or the wrestlers to sign things as well so from what, I, from what I'm reading there isn't any kind of memorabilia as such now no, okay. No, it's interesting. So, well, I mean, like you say, there four, four, four nights of four different shows as well. There, which is not something to look forward to, and something that's great for that as well. A great opportunity, perhaps, for definitely for for Bobby as well yourself. Is that you'll probably get to see so many different superstars in action because ones that are probably involved on the pay per view or ones that are not will probably get their shot on Raw or SmackDown the following evening. So, yeah, uh, definitely, exactly, definitely a lot to look forward to on that. Um, I will just touch on a couple of other topics while I'm with you, Ricky, just before we head off this yep. evening. Um, have you had much opportunity to check out with, with AEW? And if so, what are your thoughts of the product so far? So I watched some of Double or Nothing. Um, I've, I did, I've watched, yeah, as I say, some of it. I think it's got the potential. You know, it's very early days at the moment, but mm. it certainly has got the potential. I know there's a lot of hype about it. There's obviously a lot of cash behind it Tony Khan is kind of bankrolling it mm. um, I'm interested to see where it goes yeah to be fair um, you know I think it it's made if anything the competition has made WWE sit up and go actually we're not you know we're no longer guaranteed the big boys around people have got a lot more choice now you know and people yeah. do have choice uh, not just with AEW there's other promotions out there as well certainly you know the British indie scene is taking off and people are picking that over WWE um, but I think anything any kind of competition is good because it then forces people to change their mentality. And this has clearly changed WWE's mentality because, you know, I'm not saying it's the only reason, but it's probably one of the reasons why they employed Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff to those roles on Raw and SmackDown because they could probably see that something needed changing. Yeah, I agree with you entirely that they have to raise the game in WWE with the, what the, what AEW are doing. And uh, it almost feels as well that from a UK market um, at the moment, you could argue that uh, within the next 12 months that, that AEW will perhaps have the edge uh, with the idea that they will be involved with ITV and ITV box office. I think ITV4 yep. was going to be the destination for AEW. Yeah. And WWE yep. will be And also moving. you've got... WWE on BT, which yeah. is going to really, I, I'm nervous about that. And I'm not, well, I'm nervous about it in the fact that it's going to cost me more money because um, for Sky Sports, when you subscribe to Sky Sports, you get it on every single box that's in your house yeah. for the for the subscription. For BT, you don't. You have to pay extra to have it on extra boxes mm. and you have to pay extra to have it in HD. And you can't watch Raw. And I know it sounds really terrible. You're like, oh, I'm sure you could, but you, you've got to watch for me, wrestling in HD, you know, it's HD's been around for years now, and yet BT still want to charge you extra to have something that is kind of a given. Now it's kind of yeah. like the basic is that you get HD. So I think it's going to turn a lot of people off. You also then lose the Sky One highlight show on a Sunday, yeah. uh, which was an hour highlight show of Raw. Well, Sky One are not going to show that anymore. So no. as a someone who doesn't have the Sky uh, the, the sports packages, where do I then find WWE? Yeah. So I think it's it's a dangerous time for them to have signed that deal, certainly with AEW coming in and saying, here, have it on terrestrial. Mm. Do you feel that someone was perhaps misinformed in WWE that this is a, a, a good marketing move? Maybe. Either that or they've just got where the money is. Because, I mean, Either money. that or where's the money? Maybe yeah. BT, you know, it must have been BT came in. and um, Sky, I think, were disappointed in the pay-per-view buy rates. Which, you know, I'm not being funny, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that why would people pay £15 a month or however much it is now on Sky when you can get the network for 9 99 a month. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not, you know, with all the additional content as well. If Sky was smarter, 
they would go, okay, let's plug the network in and have the network as a channel on Skype. Why, why have they not thought of things like that? It would be a very clever idea to do because then you'd only have to show the what they show on the live rather than going exactly. you wouldn't necessarily get the the paperwork uh, pay per view archives, but you would get the, the, the what they're showing yep. live at the time, which would be great. Cause it's a great way then to show yep. up NXT. It would be a great great thing for them. But uh, I mean, I remember back in the old days they did have NXT on on, on Sky, but then uh, they they got rid yeah. of that, didn't they? After a while, and um, yeah. You know, it's, 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 there are rumours of Fox wanting NXT, aren't there? When it goes, yeah. when uh, SmackDown moves across to FS1, mm. there are rumours of, of them also wanting an NXT show. So that'll be interesting to see. It certainly will be indeed. We'll have to wait and see if that does uh, come about or not. Uh, one last question, uh, Ricky, before I let you go, um, is to do with uh, Raw and SmackDown. Of course, uh, you said you went to the O2 uh, very recently. Uh, and of course, with, mm-hmm. with these special events, with like WrestleMania weekends and with, with, with Raw's and that, um, is is there any, like you said there? There's a potential of meeting some of the legends, perhaps with with uh, before the Raw and Smackdowns with with SummerSlam. But um, is there a special big deal made when when they come over the pond here to the UK? Uh, not massively. I mean, they'll do um, kind of individual wrestlers will go and do meet and greets, typically at like a Smith's Toy Store or mm. uh, a game or something like that. They'll go and do it, but you have to go and get wristbands to then, yeah, it's the first 200 people in the queue, get a wristband to then meet Braun Strowman or Sheamus yeah. or someone like that. Um, they will do, if you if you pay the bucks, they will um, let you meet some of the wrestlers beforehand at some of the shows. But again, that's just like a VIP meet and greet where you'll meet two wrestlers of their choosing um, and, and, you know, get a picture with them and then go and get better seats at the arena. So they don't do half as much as to what they, they do, you know, whilst they're in the States. And I think a lot of that is when they're over here doing the European tours, they're, they're not in a place for long enough. So they mm-hmm. literally leave one arena and they'll be on the road in a van to the next arena for the next day. So I don't think they actually have enough time to do the fan meet and greets it's more doing the press you know you're always seeing them on sky sports news and i've seen them on radio x and things like that as well they'll always get the the superstars in but they tend to do more media and actually meeting the fans which is a shame because i think there's an opportunity there that they could run some of these events yeah i agree with you especially with such the largeable size of roster and everyone coming over to this side and yeah and you make a great point as well there because they do they go from like newcastle to manchester down to cardiff down to london back to liverpool they don't really have that settled uh, for for, for no. a number of days. Probably the longest time they are somewhere is probably the Raw and SmackDown days themselves, really, because that's usually yep. the one day they stay in the two same arenas. Um, is there any yep. word yet of where they're going to be? Uh, well, actually, last I do say I actually know about this already. I think uh, um, they, they they were going to come here for for November, but hasn't uh, uh, it oh, been cancelled yeah. due to the uh, the Saudi Arabia shows? Yes. So. Because obviously, by the time they come over here in November, SmackDown would have moved to a Friday night. So they always try and copy the same format, even though it's pre-recorded. They try and copy the same format. So what it was going to be, on the Friday night, they were going to be in Manchester for SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And on the Monday night, they were then moving up to Glasgow for Raw. Mm-hmm. Now, typically, traditionally, I would do Raw and SmackDown, stay up in the, you know, in the hotel and, and just do the two nights. Mm-hmm. But with it being in two different places, we kind of said... and. You know, I'm using all of my holiday to go to SummerSlam as well. We kind of said, okay, we can't really do that. So let's book a house show and let's go on the Friday night to the house show at Wembley Arena and I'll take Bobby so he can see WWE in the UK. Yeah. Fine, booked it all. They then cancelled the house show because of Saudi Arabia. Mm. And I was like, oh, well, that's, that's annoying. I was then looking at trying to get tickets for, for other events. They then cancelled Raw. So the council grew up in Glasgow on the Monday night and turned that into a house show. Yeah. And what they're doing on the Friday night, they are doing a super show, which is Raw and SmackDown being t- uh, filmed both on the same night, wow. starting at six o'clock and going all the way through to half past ten. Wow. They're filming both shows back to back. So it's it's frustrating from my point of view because I was hoping to get to, to Wembley Arena. I've got no chance of getting up to Manchester by six o'clock on that night. If it was half seven, it gives me a little bit more. Uh, time to play with, but I've got no chance of getting up there to do the super show on the Friday night. So we'll have to not do the house show this uh, this year, unfortunately. We'll have to go uh, wait until they're back down in April of next year. Yeah, it's a shame. It really is a shame. I think as well, to do a super show as well, they it seems like a great gift at the time for everybody to go and see everything, but it's very quick to get burnt out when you have all of that. Oh, it's a lot of wrestling. 
<laughs> it's a lot of wrestling. You know, yeah. sitting there, when you think as well, you know, what are they going to do with, are they going to film any main event? Are they going to film 205 Live? Or will they bolt that on to the week before and just film additional? Because it's a lot of wrestling for UK fans to sit through. I know they'll probably enjoy it, but it is a lot to sit through. Mm. Do you find that a struggle? I mean, you've done a lot of these events now. Um, I think it... Sometimes it can. You, you will feel... You're feeling the crowd, really, and I think that's why the booking plays a lot to do with this. That's why they'd always have a fantastic match followed by a match that doesn't really mean a lot, to be fair. Mm-hmm. Traditionally, that was obviously the women's matches, which were the toilet breaks. But now women's wrestling has kind of evolved, and they are you know, rightfully up there where, where they belong. It's, it's, you've got to take breaks every now and again, though, from it. That's the problem. You know, having certainly WrestleMania, which goes into almost like a seven, eight-hour show nowadays, that is a lot of wrestling. Yeah. And, you know, when you add that up as that's just one night, it's then bolting that onto absolutely everything. You do get a little bit kind of, certainly with the weeks that, that we tend to do when we go to WrestleMania, by the SmackDown, you're kind of a bit burnt out and you're thankful that it's the last event because you think, I've seen actually too much wrestling now. I've seen this, you know, so many times that I'm, I'm actually ready to go home because I've seen too much wrestling. So there is, you can get wrestling burnout. Yeah. quite easily yeah and to be fair sitting at home you feel that as, as a fan sitting on the sofa and you have easy access yeah. to, to a kitchen to you know to a restaurant mm-hmm. if you need to between the matches it's very different when you're in the arena um so yeah i do, I do have the sympathy for the guys that are uh, the girls that are there watching the shows live but um but yeah i mean i i think it still though sounds a very exciting prospect uh, ahead of you with with, with going to, to canada to go to ontario um is there anything else you're going to try to do while you're there or is it all strictly wwe related no so we've booked to go up the cn tower um to have a look up there we've also booked to go to the aquarium there's a big aquarium in in uh Toronto as well and also whilst we're over there because it'd be rude not to we're going to travel down to Niagara Falls for the day so have a look at Niagara Falls and then uh, travel back up and go to Smackdown yeah that sounds incredible sounds incredible all I can say Rick is I wish you a fantastic time uh, and I wish Bobby a great time as well uh, and I think for him it's going to be Thanks an amazing, amazing event ahead uh, just for everybody of course that's uh, probably listened to maybe not listened to previous podcasts that I, I'm really proud of the pro- podcast we've always done together uh, and I remember it's, a, it's obviously a, a couple of years old now but we've discussed about previously uh, what it's like to go to a Wrestlemania and also um, what it was like to go to Wrestlemania 32 uh, those podcasts aren't within the uh, YouTube channel search engine of SCW the wrestling channel so for anybody that does want to go and through and search for those and check those out those are there to go and listen to now but um, Ricky I want to thank you for being on the show um, it's been great to have you on and uh, is there anything, you'd like, to, me, anything you'd like to give a, a shout before, before we uh, close off the show no I'm all good thank you very much Steve no problem. Well, for, for all of us um, that, that are watching then or are listening, just to let you know, uh, on YouTube, it is SCW The Wrestling Channel. You can subscribe right now, as well as in podcast form on Spotify. There is as well on Anchor and as well iTunes. You can follow SCW on Twitter as well. It is SCW Wrestling Channel, and you've got the at SCW in capitals, underscore, then Steve, and the Steve has a capital S as well for that. Uh, that hopefully will come up on your screen in the uh, YouTube format, so you can see that there and then. Uh, but keep an eye out for more videos and more interviews coming up very soon as well on the channel. It's a good time to be here, involved with us here on SCW. Exciting times ahead. Again, once again, thank you, Ricky, and uh, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and spread the word of SCW. We'll see you next time. Take care.